Hello everyone, welcome back to the dork side. It is part three of the enclosed trailer build, and today Lil Dork and I are gonna cut a hole in the roof of this thing, terrifying, and put in a roof vent. I'm the dork in the road, and I want to be your internet writing buddy, so please consider subscribing. Welcome to part three of the enclosed trailer build. So far, we painted it white, we added some E-Track, and then, as you can see, I'm taking advantage of the E-Track to store a few items in here that I will use for camping. Since part two, which hopefully you watched, if you didn't, I'll link it for you, I added the really fancy, awesome Ryder Cargo paper towel holder slash shelf. These are Ryder Cargo tie-downs. Added those since you saw us last and they're working really well with E-Track to hold stuff on the walls. As I said, picked up this rug, which you'll see when we go camping. Everything else is pretty much the same. Today is the scariest part of the build, the thing I've been dreading and excited about in equal measure. We're gonna measure and cut a hole in the roof to install a vent. I also got a ma magnetic screen for the side door so that I can keep the door open and get some airflow without a bunch of bugs and stuff getting in, so we might try to put that on today too. But first order of business is mark where we want to put the trailer vent, cut a hole in the roof, which is terrifying. We're gonna do it. All right, gotta get outside your comfort zone sometimes, guys. It doesn't get much more outside the comfort zone than cutting a giant hole in the roof of your trailer, for me. Okay, let's roll. Fourteen and a quarter. Oh, I'm like I'm slouching. Fourteen and a quarter. Measure fifteen times, cut once. Isn't that what the saying says? Yes. Yeah. So I'll show you the hole. And obviously it looks distorted because the GoPro, but this is square. I just measured it twelve times. So I'm gonna cut a hole in the roof of this thing now with a saw, and at first drill at the corners, and then cut a hole with the saw. Moment of truth. I'm gonna use this drill and drill out the corners so I can get the jigsaw in. Cutting a hole in my trailer. shavings on me right now. Oh my god. That's cool. Oh, it's hot as hell. Woo, that's hot. It's fine. We have lots of margin for error, so I'm not worried about how far outside the lines is that is. But feel free to mock me, because, yeah. <laughs> it's so hot. Don't get it off So much you. hot metal on me. So my saw doesn't have the juice to get through the whole cut, but we're three quarters done. Lil is gonna climb up and clean off the surrounding area so the butyl tape will stick a little better. Hi. Hi. I'm just climbing the ladder. So I'm gonna let her clean that while I wait for the thing to charge. I might get the other ladder out and do the other side. Oh, should I go over over here or what? As long as the screw holes aren't showing, we're golden. Right about like that. The hole's a little too big, but you've got like such a margin for error, it's okay. Look how much light this lets in. So I'm gonna put butyl tape on the bottom of that, and we'll put it back where it's gonna go. And I'm gonna put butyl tape around the bottom edge of this to help seal it, and then we'll put a bunch of caulk on the top so it's really super sealed. We're also gonna screw it down, so it's gonna be very secure. Okay, I think we're good. No, it is so crooked. Okay, what do you think? Can you pull down on it? Is it in? So we're gonna frame it in here with these two by twos and Lil's gonna hold it from underneath and I'm gonna drill down from the top with some sheet metal screws into this piece of wood. I cut it to the exact width between these two and I'm gonna, when we're done, put a screw through the end of this. I'm gonna put a screw through here to frame it in even better, just to give it some rigidity and sturdiness, but I'm gonna attach it first to make sure I get the height right. And then if I ever decide to put uh, insulation in, I can just go from this beam over and the one on the other side over. So we're gonna do both sides. You ready, Lil? Mm-hmm. We're gonna drill some stuff. So I need you to push up against it. 
It's like giving birth. Get ready to push. Supposedly the trick is to run a bead from the edge back and forth over each screw head and that'll seal it because this is self-leveling universal roof sealant. I've never actually done this before so let's see how it goes. Maybe I didn't cut a big enough hole. This is self-leveling so it doesn't matter how even you get it because it'll stretch and eventually level out. I know this is ugly. I've never done it before. That's why I got the self-leveling stuff. It's not self-leveling. It is eventually. The sun has to hit it. Oh. It's not in the sun right now. So it's just gonna like melt? Yeah, it's flexible so it never gets rigid so it can bend and flex with the roof. It's not pretty and if this wasn't self-leveling sealant I'd be a lot more worried but the bead is run around the whole thing and that stuff is when the sun hits it, just like melts and levels out. And so it'll form a, a flexible waterproof seal around that whole edge. So it's going to be okay. I'm actually going to squirt the rest of this extra on there just for good measure. But that's it for the roof. I think it's almost done. I'm going to fall off this ladder if I'm not careful. But thank you for your help, kid. Uh -huh. And maybe we'll mess with the screen door and put the light switches up next. So I framed it in, as you can see, with two by two. And then I just added some self tappers here and here and on both sides. And this is solid and sturdy, which is what I was going for. Although I just realized these aren't attached to each other. So I should probably screw them together because it's not doing me much good there. But just lending it a little bit more stability than just having all this weight attached only to the metal skin wood. And then I'll put the garnish on so you guys can watch me put the garnish on, which is the silliest and yet most aptly named thing I've ever seen in my life. So a couple more screws, then the garnish. Then the rest of the salad, I don't know. The last piece of the vent is the garnish. And this is a purely decorative piece of plastic that just makes it look a little less ugly because it's all wood on top. Oh, come on, bro. Nobody said you could do that. These two by twos are a little wider than the garnish, so I can't put this in all the way because um, it'll break it, but these are just to hold it up. Because like I said, it's just to look pretty. That's it guys, the vent is installed. The moment of truth, because we haven't opened this at all, except the whole time. Look, ventilation and light. Let there be light. I'm really excited that this is in here. It's gonna make a huge difference. Thanks for your help, kid. It's a little while later, an hour or so. I had to take a break, cool off in the house, but then I came out and added these. Oh, battery powered. Just screwed into the wall. Maybe not a permanent solution, but it's definitely gonna work for now. Yeah, that one's crooked because I eyeballed it instead of measuring it. But they're right by the doors. So you come in, flip it on. You can see what you're doing. I like where they are. So that's a low key two screw solution that's gonna work for now. And eventually we'll think about doing 12 volt wiring or when I get a battery pack, I'll set up in here. We'll have different lighting set up, but this run on triple A's so can swap them out whenever they die and they were cheap, so I don't care if they get broken. I'm thinking I might try to put this screen up over the door and then call it a night. And it just goes on and off with the Velcro, so no big deal. It's not going to be like airtight at the bottom, but it'll do the job, I think. So I put the screen up and I trimmed the bottom, as you can see, and Lila's going to demonstrate how it works. Look at that. And then you got to, I maybe got a little tight. I can loosen it up some so it'll catch itself. But look at that, Mag magically seals up. Now I can sleep with that door open and not worry about bugs too much. And it's as secure as my tent ever was. So totally doable. So what do you think, Lil? It's cool, I like it. Looking good. Stripey. So successful day, here's what we did. 
roof fan installed pretty happy about that uh, i put the light switches up Let's check those out there's three now they're a little crooked but they work and got the door screen on so i'm ready to camp in this thing which is good because i got a trip coming up next week do a little camping a little riding so that will be the maiden voyage of this trailer and i think it's finally ready except i haven't got the wheel chocks in yet i have to do that uh, that's it for part three of the trailer build the most nerve-wracking part of the build the thing i've been most anxious about is that roof vent and it's done so i feel pretty good someday we'll put windows in but for now i'm pretty happy with the vent that's all the holes I feel like cutting in it for now. So thank you for watching. Thank you to Rocky Mountain ATV for sponsoring this build. Links for everything you saw today that I've used are in the description below. And Lil, do you have anything to say before we go? It was fun. And it was... my arms hurt from doing this and pushing up on the wood. Yeah, there was a lot of above our head today. So we're tired, so we're going to put all the stuff away, which is a lot. But you guys don't need to watch that. And then we'll take the trailer back. So for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Do you want, oh, uh, thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. She's going to get it one of these times. Oh, thank you.